In all the hurry and hustle and confusion of modern living, the Lord has a way. We believe that the Bible is God's revelation of His way. We invite you to join us for In Search of the Lord's Way with Mac Lyon. Greetings to you and welcome, my friend, to In Search of the Lord's Way, a Bible study program to learn how to live the Lord's way and to be ready to meet Him when the time comes. God has blessed this ministry beyond our fondest dreams or expectations so that we're reaching out to more people now than ever before. We're sincerely glad that you joined us today and we pray you'll find a, uh, our study today a blessing to your life. Let us hear from you this week. Topical studies in the Bible are important. Really, they're essential to a person's spiritual development and also to that of the church. But I enjoy expository studies too. Just taking a, a passage of Scripture, a paragraph, maybe a chapter, or sometimes a whole book, and just working our way through it and picking it apart and exposing its contents. And um, I think most preachers enjoy that kind of preaching too. I enjoy it especially about uh, studies about the life of Jesus. And that's what we're doing today. There's a powerfully relevant message to be learned from the passage we've chosen today. It's Luke chapter 5, verses 27 through 32. And after Ken Helterbrand has led us in a hymn, I'll be back to read it with you. Luke chapter 5, beginning at verse 27, we have these words. And after these things, he went forth and saw a publican named Levi sitting at the receipt of custom. And he said unto him, Follow me. And he left all and rose up and followed him. And Levi made him a great feast in his own house. And there was a great company of publicans and of others that sat down with them. But their scribes and Pharisees murmured against his disciples, saying, why do you eat and drink with publicans and sinners? And Jesus answering said unto them, They that are whole need not of a physician, but they that are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Now let us go to our God in prayer. Almighty God and Father of our spirits, we bow before you as one knowing all of the necessities of our lives even before we come with our petitions before you. But we pray you today, Father, to help us to meet the conditions of life about us without despair and that we can live this day to day and the rest of our lives in victory uh, through the strength that we obtain in Jesus Christ our Lord. We thank you, Father, not only for his teachings that he gave us, but for the example that he set and uh, the life that he lived before us. We pray a special blessing on those who are in, have special needs today, those who are in hospitals who are seeing and hearing these messages, and those who are in nursing homes, and those who are confined to their homes because of illness, and those because, who because of some other severe circumstances in their life are finding today difficult. Be a source of strength to them and comfort, dear Lord, we pray you in Jesus' name. Amen. Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer, that calls me from the world of care, and bids me at my Father's throne, make all my wants and wishes known. In seasons of distress and grief, my soul has all 
being the Son of God and having knowledge of all things, Jesus knew when He came into this world that His visit to this planet would be short. He came not only to personally save people, but to establish a universal community of the believers who would enjoy reconciliation and communion with God and a common fellowship with men of every race and color. He called it His kingdom or His church. Immediately upon entering His ministry, He began to look for some people with whom He could entrust the leadership in carrying on the work that He had begun after He ascended back to the Father whence He came. He found Peter and Andrew and James and John who were simple fishermen. They weren't wealthy so that they could make large contributions to the need of the efforts. They weren't educated men or politically powerful so as to gain status or political recognition. They weren't religious men of prominence or even community leaders for that matter. They were just men of character and integrity. And as we've learned, these qualities are important in leadership. But Jesus needed more than these four people. Well, you know, of course, He chose twelve such men whom He called apostles. Why He settled on twelve, I have no idea. But He gave them roles of leadership and responsibility and miraculous powers for the task which He did not promise or give to everyone who followed Him. The passage we're reading and studying today, the one we read a while ago from Luke chapter 5, is the story of His call of Levi or Matthew to be one of the twelve apostles. Levi was a publican. And if you read the Bible much, you know there are frequent references to these publicans in the stories of the life of Christ written by Matthew and Mark and Luke. Who are they? Well, the terms usually uh, and, and generally applied to a, a tax gatherer or collector. But more strictly, the publicans of Jesus' day were probably the customs officers representing the Roman government. Their very work made them unpopular. The man who opens our baggage and shuffles through all our boxes and bags and makes an estimate of the worth of our possessions is, well, he's never very popular at best. There's just a natural resentment against such things as that, and the dislike of paying taxes is nothing new to us either, is it? Well, in the New Testament period of history and among the Jews, these people were particularly unpopular because they were the Jews' immediate contact with Rome. The tax itself was considered an inherent religious wrong as, as well as a civil imposition. And many people considered the payment of the tax a sinful act of disloyalty to God. And that's evidenced in the question that was asked Jesus one time about rendering unto Caesar. To further complicate the matter, a Jew who had taken the position of a Roman tax collector was considered a renegade and a traitor. The hatred was intensified even more when it was considered that the tax laws were so ambiguous that tax collectors could collect about any sum they wanted and pass enough of it on to the high authorities to satisfy them and then keep a substantial amount for themselves. So it isn't hard for us to understand why they were considered tyrants, renegades, and extortioners. They were the despised people of their day for their dishonesty, their extortion, and their greed. The word publican was usually associated with either the word sinners or harlots or prostitutes to imply that they were the worst of men. Now on that particular day, Jesus came along by the customs house in Capernaum, which is called as His own city in Matthew chapter 9, verse 1. Though He grew up in Nazareth, obviously He had at some time or other moved over to Capernaum. And sitting here at the place of customs was Levi, or Matthew, going about his work, collecting customs. Jesus saw him there, and he invited him to come and join his company of disciples. Follow me, he said. 
Well, he could have done nothing that would have been more, that would have more clearly emphasized his compassion toward the rejected people of this world than he did on this occasion. He took Levi and transformed this sinful, despised, renegade Jew into an apostle, an evangelist, and a saint. Well, there just had to be something genuine about this man, and Jesus must have been able to see it because he immediately left all he had and was and followed Jesus. He left his good job to follow Christ. Oh, he would have a terrific transformation to make in his lifestyle. He would be forced to change some habits that had had a long and strong hold on his life. But the Bible says, He forsook all and rose up and followed him. It's likely Levi had, had to make a greater sacrifice than any of the others to be one of the Lord's apostles. Well, the scripture says that as soon as he was converted, he made a great feast in his house and he invited a great multitude of publicans and others to be his guests. The other day I was in a restaurant and overheard a man making a, arrangements uh, with the manager for a banquet at which he would host a minimum of 500 guests. Ah, when he picks up the tab for that, he'll be set back a few pesos. And so was Levi or Matthew, which means he must have had some money. And that would have been hard to leave, wouldn't it? Money's pretty important to a lot of people. The Bible says, they that would be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil or all kinds of evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. And this was the choice Matthew made. He was not only a man of money, though. He must have been one of convictions. He wasn't ashamed of his new master. He gave this great supper at his house and invited his old friends to, and fellow employees to come along. He was eager to have his old friends meet his new friends. Say, that's a good idea for disciples today. Jesus had reached down into the depths and lifted him up and out. And out of the wells of his experience and from the depths of his heart, he could joyously sing, Love lifted me. And so can we, my friend, who have been saved by this same Savior. Well, Jesus went to the supper. And as you might expect, he was criticized for eating and drinking with publicans. You must know that the Pharisees were the largest and strictest denominations in the Jewish religion, and they took great pride in that. They were the most righteous people in the world, and if you doubted it, you could ask them, and they'd tell you quickly how they fasted and prayed and gave alms. Furthermore, they had no use for the publicans and sinners. They reasoned that if Jesus were all that he claimed to be, he wouldn't do so either. No, sir, not on your life would you catch one of these Pharisees at a place like this banquet in the house of Levi. But Jesus knew their self-righteous thoughts, and he replied, They that are in health have no need of a physician, but they that are sick, I'm not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. By this, Jesus explained and vindicated his behavior and defined his earthly mission here. A doctor goes to the sick room not because he delights in disease or rejoices in suffering, but because he has compassion on the suffering people and he wants to relieve their pain. Even so, 
Jesus companied with sinners and publicans, not because he approved of sin or enjoyed the society of the depraved, but because as the healer of souls, he was willing to go where he was needed and where the, where, where the ravages of, of sin were most severe. He came into the world to save sinners. Their conduct, their wicked speech, and their evil ways distressed him greatly. All their sins pained him so much. But he sought them out and showed his understanding of their problems and his willingness as well as his power to save them. Prejudice is a terrible thing. Matthew would not be accepted in many churches now, not acceptable to many professed Christians today. He represented the scum of the earth, as some people would say. I learned a long time ago to never call anyone trash. Some do, but they're the same people who reject the poor, the children, the social rejects, the immoral, and the people of other races in our own generation. But Jesus could take this man from his lowly estate and make him an apostle and an evangelist. I'm glad. Because if Jesus were only taking the good people and the educated and the socially elite, I would have been passed over. I would have been left out. On the other hand, just as some modern churches would reject Levi, others would gladly receive him, unrepentant, sins and all, because of his money. You see, money talks with a lot of people. But please notice that Jesus didn't choose Levi because of his money, rather because of the kind of person he was. Christ isn't nearly as interested in our social standing and our wealth, our education as he is, our willingness to be molded by his teaching. Finally, Jesus came to save sinners. Levi was a sinner and he was aware of it. Are the people in the world today who don't need the spiritual remedy that the great physician brings? I didn't see the program, but I read about it later. And the writer that I was reading after was saying that while on assignment in Moscow, Diane Sawyer of ABC News interviewed Boris Yeltsin. She asked him, do you believe in God? Well, yes, he said, I, I suppose I do. Then he added, there's too much evidence in, in the universe around us to, to deny that there must be some kind of master behind it all. Well, are you going to heaven? She asked him. Without a second's hesitation, Yeltsin quickly answered with a definite, no. No? Why not? Because Yeltsin said, I'm a sinner. Then she asked, and God will keep you out of heaven for that? Of course, said Yeltsin. There's no reason why he would or should let me into his heaven. Then he turned to her and he said, you're a sinner too. You know, everybody's a sinner. Wow, what a powerful interview that was. Well, he's right, you know. Of course you know. But not everybody's ready to face up to the reality of it. Levi was a sinner. Mr. Yeltsin's a sinner. Diane Sawyer's a sinner. You and I are sinners. Will sin keep us out of heaven? Oh, yes, it will. That's the one thing that will. The evil of sin is that it separates us from God. Isaiah 59, verses 1 to 3. And God is the source of all life. Oh, Mr. Yeltsin was right again. There's really no point or purpose in soft peddling it. We need to know it. We're all sinners. No, it isn't because we were born with the guilt of Adam's sin. Not anything like that. It's because we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 3, 23. But Jesus came to call sinners to repentance. 
that's the way he described the purpose of his earthly ministry. In Luke 19, 11, he said, at the house of another publican named Zacchaeus, the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which is lost. So despite our being sinners, all of us, we don't have to miss heaven, Mr. Yeltsin. Jesus came to call all us sinners to repentance. Thank you, dear Father, for the love you demonstrated in the gift of Jesus, your Son on the cross. May we all have the courage to recognize who we are and what we are and our need of the great physician while still we have time and opportunity. In his name we pray, amen. Well, Jesus was right, wasn't he? Of course he was. He knows human nature. Most of us don't go to the doctor unless we're sick. There's a good case to be made for an annual checkup, all right, but most of us don't do it, do we now? When the pain gets bad enough, we'll give up and we'll go and see the doctor. When we get sick enough, we'll go to him. Likewise, the fellow who thinks he's doing all right without God probably won't be coming to the Savior. I read a little thing the other day about preaching. I don't know who wrote it, but it, it told about a fellow who scribbled a note to the preacher. And maybe it was a she, I don't know. Anyway, the note said, I hope you're happy after your sermon on half truth is a whole lie. I put my true weight on my driver's license. You see, that's what distinguishes the sermon from a Bible class lesson. The class study is meant to inform, to increase our knowledge of the Bible. While the sermon, well, it does that all right, but it's meant to change our behavior, to persuade people to repent and come to Christ. Repentance isn't something that God does for us. It isn't a miraculous work of the Holy Spirit on the heart of a person. Repentance is a change of the heart or the mind that's preceded by sorrow for a misspent life and is always followed by a change of behavior. The Apostle Peter told the people, many of whom had participated in the crucifixion of Christ, to repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission or the forgiveness of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 2, verse 38. And verse 41 says, Then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and there were added unto them in that day about 3,000 souls. And you can do that too, my friend. Why not? You're not too good to need the Savior. You're not too bad for him to save you or to be accepted among the disciples. If we may help you, give us a call. But there's still another thing. God can put the sinner's life in order and use him for noble purposes. Levi became an apostle of Jesus Christ. 
He was blessed with the privilege of writing one of the only 27 books of the New Testament. He not only got to write one of the original, uh, got to be one of the original apostles, but there were only eight people who were inspired to write those New Testament books, and he got to write one of them, and his was one of the four biographies of Jesus. Although Matthew left a lucrative job to come to work for Jesus, he didn't lose a thing. He got into something with real meaning. He had made something of his life. Well, if you'd like a free audio cassette tape or printed transcript of today's message titled, Jesus Calls Sinners, please write us. In Search of the Lord's Way, Post Office Box 371, Edmond, Oklahoma 73083. Or if you prefer, you may use our toll-free telephone number to make your request for that program. And that number is 1-800-321-8633. Be sure to tell us whether you want the cassette tape or the transcript. Give us a few days to fill your request. Mention the title, if you will. Now, it takes a while for us to fill your request because there are many. We're represented here by churches, or we're presented here, I should say, by Churches of Christ, any one of which would just love to have you worship with them. Why not resolve to do that at your very next opportunity? If you need help in finding one, call us. We help people like this every week. I hope you'll be with us again next time. God bless you now. We love you.